Hello. Welcome to the Trustworthy Systems Lab. I'm Kirsten Eder. I lead this lab. I'm Professor of Computer Science at the University of Bristol. And at the Bristol Robotics Lab, I lead the research theme on verification and validation for safety in robots. Now, here at the lab, we take the view that in many cases, trust first needs to be gained, can be lost, is then far harder to regain and can be lost again. But trustworthiness should always be demonstrable. So our research is focused on finding and developing techniques that help engineers and system developers gain confidence in the correctness of the designs and systems they develop. Confidence in the trustworthiness of a system can be gained in a variety of different ways. One of these is by design. Systems that are simple by design are often understandable and deserve our trust perhaps for this reason. So simplicity and clarity of both the design as well as the implementation are two of our key research objectives. In our most recently funded research project, we are exploring how to design autonomous systems for trustworthiness. So we're asking the research question, what makes a system trustworthy, especially an autonomous system? We are considering this question from a variety of different angles, including the end user's perspective and the developer's perspective, but also the perspective of the regulators. And in this project, we aim to promote trustworthiness to a first class system development objective alongside the more traditional objectives such as functionality, safety, reliability and security. Another way to gain confidence in the trustworthiness of a system is through transparency. Systems that allow us an insight into how they make decisions, why they act in a certain way, or perhaps how they use resources such as time, power and energy. Such systems become understandable, predictable and may deserve our trust. So transparency is another one of our key research objectives. What we see here at the bottom of this slide are four heat maps. And these illustrate how energy is consumed as machine instructions are processed by a CPU. From left to right, we have addition, subtraction, shift left, and logic and. Now, arguably, perhaps the logic and is the most beautiful to look at, but the subtraction, which is the second one from the left, gives us a large amount of insight into how we can perhaps optimize the energy consumed during a computation. Now, at the Trustworthy Systems Lab, we are developing energy consumption models and analysis techniques that allow us to predict the energy consumed by a computation, in some cases at compile time, but most certainly also at runtime. And this paves the way to greener, more energy efficient computing. Of course, verification and validation are key research areas in the Trustworthy Systems Lab. In this context, verification is understood to be the process used to gain confidence in the correctness and trustworthiness of a system with respect to its specification. In contrast, validation ask the question whether a system is fit for purpose when placed in its target environment. Our research includes the entire spectrum of verification and validation techniques, such as rigorous proof, but also model checking and advanced simulation-based techniques. In particular, we like to find techniques that increase the level of automation available in the verification process. And a particular challenge there is test generation in the context of simulation-based verification. Some of our research investigates how to take advantage 
of artificial intelligence for test generation. And most recently, we're also developing game theoretic approaches in this area. Let me now invite you to a tour of the research in the lab. We will start with simulation-based verification of connected autonomous vehicles. In this area, we are contributing to two nationally funded collaborative research projects. We are also contributing to a European project, which investigates how to make cyber physical systems more energy efficient and also more secure. Now, some of our research is directly funded by industry. Currently, we're working with a local semiconductor design company in order to explore how to use machine learning to make simulation-based verification of hardware designs more efficient and effective. And we also have PhD projects which are sponsored by industry directly. And both of these are focused on verification-based techniques. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Hello, my name is Greg Chance, and I'm a researcher at the Trustworthy Systems Lab and the Bristol Robotics Lab. In this talk, you will learn about the research we are undertaking into autonomous vehicle verification. Researchers at the Trustworthy Systems Lab have a strong presence in the CAM community, and we specialize in simulation-based verification and autonomous vehicle testing. We work in collaboration with the Robotics Lab on a number of autonomous vehicle projects. The BRL is leading the UK in multidisciplinary ro robotics research and home to around 300 researchers and support staff. These projects have enabled BRL to invest in a comprehensive pan vehicle testing and assessment facility. This includes VR enhanced simulation and fully instrumented controlled roadways, including advanced uh, wireless vehicle to infrastructure communications. Supported vehicle types range from domestic cars through a variety of pod and shuttle style vehicles to parcel delivery vans and buses. Our research efforts are concerned with how we can acquire a high degree of confidence in the verification process by application of a number of testing methodologies. Ultimately, we seek to attain uh, the tools and methods that may inform the trustworthiness of an autonomous system. We support the role of simulation for testing of autonomous vehicles. Within these virtual environments, the autonomous vehicle control system can be integrated with virtual sensors to replicate driving behavior on the road. This allows verification engineers to design a full range of tests to cover all aspects of road safety, such as pedestrian safety tests, or to investigate known dangerous road junctions and find rare, rare cor corner cases. An example of a dangerous scenario is shown in the lower right video, where a vehicle turns through stationary traffic, potentially unaware of cyclists passing along the inside. Simulation allows testing to be conducted safely in a virtual space, especially useful for dangerous collision avoidance or emergency braking performance testing. Simulation allows full environmental control, including illumination and weather conditions that may impact on the performance when considering perception stack testing, for example. This is shown in the uh, lower left figure. Simulation is cost efficient with respect to on-road trials and also time efficient given simulations can be run faster than in real time and also in parallel. We have found that the open source Carla simulator can be used successfully for these purposes. Trustworthy Systems Lab researchers have experience with the integration of the uh, ADS or automated driving system or controller logic into the simulation environment. We have integrate, integrated these logic controllers that have been developed from project partners uh, for the purposes of verification, as shown in the lower left picture, where a driverless pod is undertaking a static hazard test. We have developed in-house controllers that, are, that can be used in lower fidelity simulations. And there are also multi-sensor open source controllers available from Autoware and Apollo, for example. 
The group has experience with the generation of virtual environments, uh, from motorways, roundabouts and bridges, to more unique road layouts, such as the double mini roundabout in the lower right corner. Uh, these maps can then be annotated with the normal driving routes that can be followed by simulated vehicles to generate a traffic background of normal and well-behaved driving. Trustworthy Systems Lab researchers have experience with the integration of the uh, ADS or Automated Driving System or Controller Logic into the simulation environment. We have integrate, integrated these logic controllers that have been developed from project partners uh, for the purposes of verification, as shown in the lower left picture, where a driverless pod is undertaking a static hazard test. We have developed in-house controllers that, are, that can be used in lower fidelity simulations, and there are also multi-sensor open source controllers available from AutoWare and Apollo, for example. The group has experience with the generation of virtual environments, uh, from motorways, roundabouts and bridges, to more unique road layouts, such as the double mini roundabout in the lower right corner. Uh, these maps can then be annotated with the normal driving routes that can be followed by simulated vehicles to generate a traffic background of normal and well-behaved driving. Another area of test generation that we are looking into is the use of video games. We've invested in the development of a scenario building game where the objective is to gain points by triggering assertions or driving rules. The gameplay is based around the embedded autonomous vehicle controller, which undertakes a predefined route shown to the player. The player can enter an edit mode where they can place static obstacles, such as road cones and debris, the player can also place movement tracks for other actors, such as pedestrians, cars and dogs, to follow. These trajectory splines can be edited uh, at any time during the game to modify and fine-tune the interaction of the tests. This crowdsourcing method relies on the ingenuity of gamers to devise tests motivated by the reward of points or access to new levels and potentially other test vehicles. The log file of the game allows researchers to reconstruct the events of the game leading to the assertion trigger, including the position of all the actors, their velocity, and any status indicators, such as for traffic light signals. If the gamer generates a useful test, then this log file can be uploaded for rerunning and closer examination by researchers. The game can be downloaded and run locally, but there is also opportunity to distribute this as a web-based tool. There is ongoing uh, work to promote the game at dissemination events, either through touch-based tablet version of the game or a full arcade-style arcade kiosk. Hi, I'm Anastasia, and I did automotive cybersecurity for my master's thesis project. Now, essentially, cars have been built in a certain way for a very long time. Since about the 1980s, the general architecture of a vehicle is you have a set of control boards that control every function of a car, including safety critical systems, so braking, lights, you know, engine management, everything is controlled by these uh, boards. Now, obviously, because certain components need to communicate with each other in, in order to do their job, we, you need a network for them to communicate on. In, in a car, this is known as the CAN bus. Now, the CAN bus has a lot of advantages. It has a lot of very low latency. Um, it's very fast, which is important in a real-time system. Uh, there's redundancy, there's error checking, and so on. Now, the problem comes in is that it has not been updated on a design level since you know, the 1980s, and initially it was envisioned as a closed system. So the user was not supposed to access it at all. There was supposed to be no external input into the CAN bus. Obviously, modern vehicles have a lot of external access points, so things like Wi Fi, cellular signal um, integration, like you know, you have the apps on your phone for your car, GPS systems, everything. And essentially, because the CAN bus network connects to every safety critical component inside the vehicle, by giving external access to that internal system, you, it's very unsecure design-wise. Now, where my project comes in is trying to bridge that gap 
uh, and the lack of cybersecurity professionals in the automotive industry at the moment by bringing in an educational level. Uh, so essentially the idea is to run workshops in uh, schools. So for children aged 11 to 17, and by running practical workshops using a physical board, uh, which you can see on the lower left of my screen. And essentially this, this physical board emulates exactly how a car would work. So it has internal network, two ECU components, and a connection through ethernet so that you can uh, read what packets are being sent between each component. Now, by using this board and running a physical practical workshop, the hope is to raise the next generation of cybersecurity professionals who have an awareness and understanding of the design flaws of such a system and also hopefully to think up a ways to mitigate it. And in this way, when connected auto autonomous vehicles um, start being uh, designed and produced more in the coming years, uh, hopefully they will have a much more cyber secure design and ultimately become much safer for everybody. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin McAreevy. I'm a researcher in the Trustworthy Systems Lab working on agent-based test generation for autonomous vehicles. There are two main aspects to this work. On the one hand, we're interested in the theoretical foundations to the problem in the context of game theory. And on the other hand, we're interested in practical considerations around agent design for simulation in order to test existing AV controllers. From the theory side, we can conceptualize this problem as a two-player game between an AV controller and a tester agent, where the objective of the tester agent is to bring about situations in which test assertions are triggered. These situations correspond to goal states for the tester agent, and when the agents arrive in these goal states, the game will terminate. We can then define a test in this context as a policy for the tester agent that guarantees the triggering of test assertions. These policies are branching policies because we need to account for all the possible actions that might be executed by the AV controller when the test is run. From the practical side, we'll be faced with two tasks. Firstly, we'll need to choose an appropriate simulator, and secondly, we'll need to choose an appropriate agent design. Each of these tasks will have their own considerations. With the simulator, well, we might consider the reality gap and the computational cost. A simulator that is not reflective of the real world may give us low confidence in our ability to mimic real on-road testing, whereas a simulator that is highly realistic may be computationally expensive. This will limit the number of simulations that we can actually run, which will lower our confidence in our test results. In terms of the agent design, we might consider the quality of tests and their associated development effort. Agents that can generate high quality tests may require significant effort to develop, train, and maintain. On the other hand, satisfactory tests might be achieved with simple agents that require minimal development effort. Within the Trustworthy Systems Lab, we have developed our own low fidelity simulator called Calv Gym. This is based on the OpenAI Gym Toolkit for Reinforcement Learning, but is compatible with many existing tools for agent development. It's currently available on GitHub for download. Hi, I am Dr. Kiragos Georgiou, and I have been a senior research associate of the Trustworthy System Lab for the last seven years. One of the main research areas of the group aims to address the software challenges that the Internet of Things evolution faces. Internet of Things is a technological revolution with the aim of embedding little computing devices in all kinds of objects to sense the environment, collect data, perform some basic computations, and transmit the data to the cloud for further processing. The application space is enormous, spanning from healthcare to agriculture and every other modern industry. ARM, one of the leading semiconductor IP providers worldwide, predicts that by 2035, one trillion IO2 devices will be installed across the world. The realization to this, of these devices is challenging since IoT systems are typically resource constrained. IoT devices are based on small processors with limited memory and computation power. Since such devices are embedded in the environment and not part of any power grid, they have limited and unreliable energy sources such as energy harvesting. Thus, optimizing such applications 
applications for better resource usage is of great importance. Furthermore, critical IoT systems typically must execute their tasks within a specified time frame, ensuring that their software is never surpassing this time limit is challenging. Finally, IoT software must be free from bugs and security vulnerabilities. Our research group has been spearheading research in solving the IoT challenges over the last several years to enable the software development to optimize the energy consumption of IoT systems. We are researching and developing techniques to accurately measure the energy consumption of IoT oriented processors and to estimate the energy consumption of software by analyzing code or by collecting statistics while executing on a hardware platform. Traditional software development tools are not focused on optimizing the resource usage for IoT systems, but rather for larger systems. Developers need to go beyond the standard optimizations offered by these development tools to realize the resource constrained IoT systems. Thus, we are researching and developing techniques that can automatically optimize further than what can be achieved by the standard development tools the resource usage in terms of execution time, memory usage, and energy consumption. Finally, the, for the I, IoT critical systems, we are researching and developing software analysis techniques that can estimate the worst case execution time of programs and ensure that they are free from bugs and any security vulnerabilities. Thank you for your time. If you want to speak with us about any of our research topics, please, contact us using our webpage contact info. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Dr. Chris Nikov and I work as a senior research associate here at the University of Bristol and I'll briefly present my main research topic which is energy aware computing and uh, research management primarily in embedded systems. I mean the, the aim of this short presentation here isn't really to go into details uh but just give a general overview of what i'm what i'm mainly working on so the practical outcomes of my research is to improve efficiency of existing systems or existing embedded systems that can result in more battery life uh, through maybe more effective use of dynamic voltage and frequency scaling uh, or improve performance uh, by more efficient usage of onboard accelerators, uh, thus counteracting the effects of dark silicon. So dark silicon, what it means is that at the moment on the embedded systems chip, there could be multiple different types of accelerators. For example, your GPU, maybe there's an artificial intelligence unit, maybe there's some voice processing, and uh, most of those cannot be switched on at the same time even though you are capable of using them in parallel, just because the thermal um, profile of the system exceeds uh, the cooling, for example, because embedded systems don't have like powerful cooling systems. Uh, and that results in, you know, dark silicon, where you have pieces of the chip where you have the available hardware, but you can't utilize it properly. So I also developed techniques to uh, maybe clock down you know, there's different accelerators that you can use in order to use them more efficiently. And uh, I am primarily interested in actually developing usable tools for efficient power and uh, research management um, for future systems as well. Uh, you can find my code on GitHub or using this QR code. And there you also find the projects that I've been working on and, uh, you know, any of the deliverables associate. So here are some of the boards uh, that I've been working with, some of the embedded systems. The Order XU3, I use this during my PhD. It's based on ARM. Uh, it has onboard sensors and I did a very complex power model. Um, it has like two types of processors on the same chip. Um, so it was interesting to develop models for each of them individually and also a model if you run a process on one processor, uh, what would it the energy consumption be uh, when you run it on the other type and vice versa. 
so I also worked with this platform, the UltraScale Plus development platform. Um, so this has an onboard CPU and FPGA, and my primarily the focus of my research was to uh, actually execute a program, several benchmarks actually, uh, in parallel on both the CPU and FPGA and figure out the most efficient distribution of the workload between both of them. So again, efficient use of onboard accelerators. And then currently I'm using, uh, I'm working on uh, this uh, developing power models for this uh, Geisler evaluation board. It features a Leon 3 CPU, which is a French uh, open source uh, chip uh, that is primarily used in space communication. So the idea of this is that I'm developing power models which are used in a static analysis tool. So when you have your code, you run it through the tool, it gives you an estimation of the energy consumption, and then you can figure out which parts of the code you can further optimize. Because again, the idea is once it's up in the air, you can't really change the code that easily. So you do it uh, uh, during the development process. So here are some pictures of uh, me during my work. So this is at the time of my PhD, where I was doing models for this other XU3 board. So this is me in Cambridge, where I've already developed my model, and I've tested it on uh, several. So these are the same Android XU3 boards, uh, they're just different boards, and I'm just testing the model across all of them. Uh, and this is the UltraScale platform running some code, and I took a selfie. OK. Uh, if you're interested in any part of my work, power modeling, energy management, uh, dynamic energy aware scheduling, um, performance oriented scheduling, feel free to send me an email at chris.nikov uh, chris at bristol.ac.uk. Uh, oh, my contact details are in the first slide as well. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. My name is Nyasha Masamba. And this is a summary of my work, which I've been doing as a PhD student for the last three years as part of the Trustworthy Systems Lab. Some of the work is in collaboration with my colleague, Shang Zheng, and is on advanced stimulus generation and simulation-based verification. Now, CRV, which is constraint random verification, and formal verification are currently the state-of-the-art approaches to functional verification. CRV is highly scalable yet inefficient. Many simulation cycles are spent exploring the same DUV state space. Formal verification, on the other hand, is the opposite. It is highly efficient, yet it's not very scalable. How can we take advantage of the advantages offered by both while mitigating their drawbacks? Well, my research in collaboration with Infineon Technologies is employing AI techniques, machine learning included, to investigate the middle ground between CRV and formal verification to answer this very question. So to date, the research has taken three main approaches. Based on Sean's results, there is a positive relationship between the novelty score, which is a measure of how distant a test is from other tests, and coverage. Therefore, we employed novelty scoring as a ranking mechanism to prioritize novel tests or simulation. We're using supervised learning methods, such as the decision tree and the random forest, which is an ensemble of decision trees, to learn conditional rules from coverage feedback. The learned rules act as constraints to bias new test stimuli generation and plug coverage holes. Number three, we're enhancing DUV state space exploration by implementing an a test generation agent based on intelligent tree search. The agent explores only the most promising test trajectories while backtracking when obstacles such as illegal test values are encountered. In this way, agent-based test generation can auto automatically and adaptively find and hit the interesting corner cases on a highly complex design, such as an industrial autonomous driving assistance system microcontroller. All of this results in less reliance on handwritten constraints and random test generation. Verification engineers have access to a verification model that is efficient with less repetitive simulation. It is effective with high cover coverage quickly reached and bugs discovered earlier and requires less manual labor. If you're interested to hear more, please do get in touch. Thank you very much. 
Hello everyone, this is Shenzhen and this is a drone video from Niasha and uh, me. Since we are in the same research area, which is advanced stimulus generation in simulation-based design verification. First, let's take a look on why we do research on this area. This is a diagram of traditional coverage-driven verification. Verification engineers first constrain directives in order to produce tests that potentially can increase functional coverage. In this way, we can gain confidence in design. However, this process has many shortfalls. Manually constraining directives need tremendous domain knowledge and uh, this is time consuming often driving after driving so many tests to design we can't get any increase in functional coverage one way to solve it is to use test selector test selector can prioritize simulation of tests that are predicted to bring higher cumulative coverage Test selector can be achieved by any promising machine learning model. I used outlier detection, this machine learning technique to achieve test selector. As shown in the diagram, the number to achieve the target coverage has been obviously saved compared to human efforts. Hello everyone, my name is Anas Shrina, and the aim of my research is to study the verification and validation of planning-based autonomous systems. These systems are increasingly applied to real-world applications. Errors in such critical systems could result in catastrophic consequences. The state-of-the-art planning domain model verification methods are vulnerable to false positive counterexamples i.e. counterexamples that are unreachable by planners when the planning domain model under verification is used in real planning task. These false positive counterexamples can misguide the designers to overcomplicate their domains. To overcome this shortfall, we propose to constrain the verification method with the planning goals. Thus, we introduce the goal-constrained planning domain model verification method. This method is guaranteed not to return any false planning counterexamples. In our paper, we demonstrate the visibility of our approach using the spin model checker and the MIPS XXL planner. We've chosen this planner because it supports the planning state trajectory constraint that we use in our approach. In addition to that, we investigate the validation of planning domain model functional equivalency. This is an interesting topic and it has many applications. For example, evaluating the quality of automated planning model learning algorithms, validating planning domain models learning optimization methods do not alter the functionality of the original domains, and to check if two planning domain models that are allegedly represent the same domain are actually equivalent. In our paper, we formally define planning domain model functional equivalency, and we introduce a theory about the planning domain model reachability, and we provide its proof. This formed the theoretical basis of our proposed solution. We are currently investigating the use of a combination of techniques, such as planning, SAT solving, and uh, mapping tables, to develop a tool to prove the functional equivalency of a real world sized planning domain models. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhinub Gabriel, and I'm both a PhD student and a research associate. I've been with the TSLAP for two years now. Um, my main research focus is on how can we make machine learning self-adaptive um, for, so, for safe deployment and safety critical systems. For those of you who don't know um, what machine learning systems are, 
there are essentially software systems that evolve based on data gathered from its environment to implement a form of inductive inference to classify or judge on unseen data. There are many challenges facing machine learning uh, when using safety critical systems, which is restricting them from being deployed. Therefore, post-deployment self-monitoring and self-correcting machine learning models are necessary for deployment of such systems. This will immune these systems from um, failing due to unseen data or cyber attacks. We have four areas of research in this theme. Um, the first on the top left um, uses computer vision techniques to check for small features in object detectors to ensure correct classification was made by the machine learning model. If not, then feedback is used to sort of free train the machine learning model. The second area of research on the top right dives into the power of simulation in training machine learning models. However, these models are often useless when transferred to the real world due to what is so-called the reality gap. For example, pedestrian detection in self-driving cars. Um, pedestrians look different in simulation compared to the real world, which would make the trained model fail at detecting pedestrians in the real world. We need to find ways of uh, basically self bridging this gap. The third sub theme on the bottom right is more of an open ended one. Uh, robots that use machine learning models need to be able to detect irregular or unexpected inputs in order to generalize enough to be deployed. Um, this is difficult. However, we can create models that mimic human self awareness concepts. Um, to make these robots detect failures via concepts like um, confusion, for instance. Um, last but not least, um, the sub theme at the bottom right uh, is on human right in, uh, human robot interaction. This theme faces similar research questions like the ones discussed previously, focusing on challenges for self correcting robots uh, that needs to work seamlessly in manufacturing, surgical, and other HRI applications. Um, if any, if any of these uh, projects interest you or these fields interest you, uh, uh, feel free to get get in touch. Thank you. Cheers. We are offering several projects for students interested in working in this area. Firstly, verification of autonomous driving. We are using simulation-based techniques to verify autonomous driving functions. Our research is currently investigating techniques that automate test generation to achieve reactive tests that are closer to reality and reach coverage faster. There are various options to contribute to this research. One option is to explore how multi-agent systems can be used to automate test generation. Secondly, energy consumption modeling and analysis. We have developed techniques to model, analyze, and predict the energy consumption of programs at compile time and at runtime. We are interested in applying these techniques in different areas in collaboration with our project partners in the Team Play project. Embedded processes or robotics applications are also options for this project. Next, breaking the brakes. This is a topic we are investigating with TALIS eSecurity. There are various directions this can be taken. One option is to further develop material to teach secondary school children about cybersecurity with workshops and hands-on experiments using a development board. Another option is to analyze the data on a test rig with the aim to identify abnormal behavior so that this can be detected before things go wrong. We are also interested in using simulation at a huge scale and machine learning to analyse, predict the potential impact of a, a detected anomaly. The test generation game. Uh, we are exploring the use of gaming to generate tests for simulation based verification and autonomous driving functions. There is clear commercial interest and the prototype of the game. Uh, the bridge to test generation needs to be developed and evaluated. Trustworthy autonomous systems. 
We have just won a large grant to explore what makes autonomous robots trustworthy. Any projects in the, this area are welcome. Uh, this is a national initiative and we are starting by investigating requirements to specify what it means for a system to be considered trustworthy. Our work in Bristol is focused on systems with evolving functionality and we focus on verification. And finally, formal and test-based verification. We're interested in using formal in combination with test-based methods to analyze code for cybersecurity. In particular, we are using fuzzing and the Spark subset of ADA in this context. We are open to suggestions. Welcome back. I hope this has given you a good insight into the breadth and depth of the research conducted in the Trustworthy Systems Lab. Please get in touch to discuss opportunities for collaboration or any project ideas that you might have. We look forward to hear from you.